Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. The White House announced yesterday that President Trump will hold a one-on-one -on -one summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin on July 16 in Helsinki, Finland. On Air Force One today, the president told reporters that he will discuss with Putin the ongoing situations in Syria and Ukraine, election meddling, and the de-escalation of tensions with Russia and China. President Trump's national security advisor, Ambassador John Bolton, was in Moscow earlier this week meeting with Putin and their other Russian officials to help prepare for the summit. He also addressed critics who believe the meeting shouldn't happen due to the ongoing Russia probe taking place here in the United States. Take a look. Well, I think a lot of people have said or implied over time that a meeting between President Trump and President Putin would somehow prove some nexus between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin, which is complete nonsense. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that's been helpful. The fact is that uh, it's important for the leaders of these two countries to meet. Uh, there are a wide range of issues, despite the differences between us, where uh, both President Trump and President Putin think they may be able to find constructive solutions. Uh, I'd like to hear someone say that's a bad idea. Joining us now with reaction, retired CIA senior intelligence officer and Fox News contributor Daniel Hoffman and former deputy assistant to President Trump and Fox News national security strategist Sebastian Gorka. All right, good evening, gentlemen. Dan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you know, what's fascinating to me is that, you know, since uh, John Bolton has been uh, 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 the Secretary of State, I mean, we've had a meeting with Kim Jong-un. We now have a meeting lined up in, in two weeks uh, with Putin. I mean, is, it, it is just amazing, is it not, that we have been able to have these sit-downs when the last administration uh, didn't know how to meet with anybody that, that like Putin or Kim Jong-un. Yeah, Ambassador Bolton is absolutely right about the importance of, of high-level diplomacy. I would caution just from my experience at CIA about managing our expectations. We have an extraordinarily complex and challenging relationship with Russia mm -hmm. where few of our interests intersect. Uh, we also have this background of Russia's nefarious espionage operations. They're meddling in our election with cyber intrusions, which Ambassador Bolton, in my view, rightly called an act, an act of, of war. war. Right. But there's no question that it's important. The stakes are high, and that's why diplomacy matters. We will talk about the important issues of the day, including arms control. The START treaty is due to expire in February 2021. We might want to talk about extending it. There's Ukraine and Syria, not to mention the traditional issues of counterterrorism, uh, counterproliferation, and fighting organized crime together. All right, Sebastian Gorka, let's talk about Ukraine. Uh, you know, uh, the, the pro Russian separatists and everything going on in Ukraine that uh, Barack Obama did nothing about. I mean, what leverage do we have? Have with Russia uh, to be able to get them to forget about coming to the table. They're already at the table. But how do we leverage them? Well, Russia is in a world of hurt right now. If you look at every single significant policy decision the president has taken in the last year and a half, Judge, which has any uh, impact on Russia, uh, they have been hurt, whether it is unleashing fracking in the Anwar, whether mm -hmm. it's getting NATO nations finally mm -hmm. to pay the 2 percent of their defense budgets, or whether it's arming the Ukrainians, we have a lot of leverage. This is a country that is in a death spiral. 600,000 Russians died die every year more than are born. The average mortality of a Russian male is under 60. So there's all kinds of things where it's economic, diplomatic, that we can leverage. But the big it's problem amazing. is this is, a, this is a nation run by a former KGB officer, and into the kinds of people that Daniel was dodging in Moscow for many years. This is not your average country. All right, Daniel, you're shaking your head. Add to no, it. I'm nodding. It's Sebastian Gork. Dr. Gork is 100% right about that. <laughs> All right, but then, but then, uh, what do we have to offer them? Uh, well, it, it, you know, I think uh, Dr. Gorka was right about the leverage in Ukraine. What scares Vladimir Putin is democracy. That's an existential threat to his uh, regime security. Having a country on his border with a large number of ethnic Russians and Russian-speaking population like Ukraine, uh, which is uh, in growing in its relationship with the European Union and with NATO, and has just received Tomahawk anti-tank weapons, mm -hmm. uh, Javelin anti-tank weapons from the United States. 
Um, I think we need to double down on our support to Ukraine. I'd like to see the president publicly make a statement, a commitment to Ukraine's territorial integrity and independence uh, at the summit. Uh, I think a harder one for us is going to be Syria, where this week yeah. Russia launched attacks in southwestern Syria that resulted in the deaths of lots of civilians. They broke the truce that was agreed to a year ago. Um, I think that was a truce designed to allow Assad to go focus on other areas in Syria like Damascus. Russia's allies are Hezbollah and Iran. I'm not sure I see us breaking through there with any sort of a resolution. Well, does, does Russia, uh, Dr. Gorka, have any kind of incentive to get out of Syria? What does it benefit Russia yes. to be in Syria? Well, look, Russia has to be understood as different from other countries. This isn't Belgium. This isn't Canada. I, I always label Russia as an anti-status quo actor. They meddle in other people's business. They destabilize regions to profit from that instability. However, they're in trouble in Syria. Remember, Secretary Mattis has said that U.S. forces have killed over 200 Russian mercenaries in Syria. It's not going well. It doesn't play well at home. They want relevance. Putin wants to demonstrate relevance. And he knows with Donald Trump, this is a very, very different president. And when they have this meeting, and I just have a few seconds left, what do you think we're going to come out with? But I think we're going. I want to thank you both for being with us tonight. Thank you, Dr. Gorka. And thank you so much, Dan Hoffman.